Welcome back to Inside the Middle East. You join us in a water world at the brand new Atlantis Mega Resort here in Dubai, which takes its name from the fabled lost city of Atlantis, a legendary maritime civilization that it said was swallowed by the sea. Well, this 21st century version of Atlantis is fast becoming a magnet for visitors who can tour this subterranean world. Like the guests, the 250 species of fish here swim around the aquarium in five-star luxury. They're even hand-fed at times with 100 special waiters called the Fish Husbandry Team. It's home to 65,000 sea creatures living in 42 million litres of water. Now, according to the Greek philosopher Plato, the people of Atlantis spread throughout the Mediterranean Sea. Although there's little hard historical evidence of the existence or location of Atlantis, archaeologists have no such skepticism about the existence of the Phoenicians, a nation of traders and seafarers who faded into obscurity. But they left a genetic mark across much of the Mediterranean. Cal Perry now investigates. Six billion people around the globe. It's an incredible undertaking, auspicious in both its size and stated goal. National Geographic has partnered with IBM and other private sponsors to map the history of human migration via DNA. They believe through a simple swab of the cheek, the migration of the human race can be traced from its beginnings in Africa some 60,000 years ago until now. Who were these people? With shared genetic characteristics of each human, helping scientists piece together how our ancestors spread out across the earth, the quote, geneographic project is only halfway through its five-year course. But both IBM and National Geographic have set lofty expectations. The ultimate goal for this project is to literally bring us all a little bit closer together. The cool thing that, that comes out of this research is obviously that we're all connected to each other and that we scattered to the wind, if you will, to populate the world over the last 60,000 years. Spencer Wells is the lead geneticist on the global project. He's making a point to travel the, quote, four corners of the earth, as he says, to acquire at least 100,000 DNA samples. From urban populations to remote indigenous groups. But it's here, in Lebanon, where scientists say one of the biggest common traits has emerged. In a place that in some ways is defined by its division, Sunni and Shia, Christian and Muslim, researchers say DNA studies show that many people here could share a common heritage, Phoenician. Morocco. Dr. Pierre Zaloua heads up the project here in Lebanon, and with a small army of college-level volunteers, he's taken what little was known of the Phoenicians and confirmed through the swabs that a number of people with that common DNA trait live along the shores of the Mediterranean. The big part of the project is, yes, it's this genetic layer on top of history and archaeology, but we did not expect to find such a signature, you know, such a paramount signature that is still present in one in 17 men that were tested throughout those colonies and those sites, so which I think was a bit surprising to us. Little is known about this culture from 3,000 years ago. Acknowledged for its extensive trading centers across the Mediterranean, the Phoenicians quickly spread across North Africa. Recognized around the world mostly for the military command of Hannibal and his home base, the great city of Carthage, here in Lebanon, the Phoenicians are credited with creating the origins of the alphabet, although it's still debated throughout the scientific community. The major seaports used 3,000 years ago by the Phoenicians are still functioning today. The southern Lebanese cities like Tyre and Sidon, when not battered by conflict, can still be bustling. Of course, National Geographic and Dr. Zalua are not the only ones studying human history. For years, archaeologists have been combing those very cities and unearthing the clues that lie beneath. Dr. Sada, an archaeologist from the American University of Beirut, is skeptical of the genetic studies. There is no uh, racial features that distinguish. I mean, there are Mediterranean uh, types of people who uh, were all over the area. So there is nothing 
in their genetic constitution, I would say, that would separate a Phoenician or distinguish a Phoenician from any other ancient inhabitant of this part. How many samples are we looking at? Archaeology here? and genetics aside, the study has caused a bit of a stir. So you could see here we have thousands and thousands of samples. And word of it has spread beyond the borders of Lebanon. <laughs> Mohammed Amin, along with his wife and family, drove from Syria throughout the night, all in the hopes of gaining a glimpse into their past. In this case, for speed, they give blood. Do you have any expectations? No. No, no, no. no. So uh, it's I have just, no curiosity. just curiosity. Just curiosity. Just yes. curiosity. Just curiosity. Okay. A lot of people actually who are coming here, they just because they, they want to know, just out of curiosity. It's not the fact that they are Phoenicians or non-Phoenicians or, or Persians or non-Persian. Syria, there is many uh, people just, came yeah. to, uh, to, to like Syria. Lebanon. Yes. It's a melting pot So as well. I want to, to know from where I, I, yes. I came. Maybe I'm from the, not from Syria. Yeah. Maybe I'm from yeah. uh, other countries. Yes. But in the end, in a place with so many divisions, researchers are searching for human connections through science. I don't think that whether you are, you know, Christian, Muslim, or any other religion, you would have a problem understanding your history. And I'm talking about history prior, well before this religion divide. So I think, on the contrary, I think these studies will actually bring people together much more, much more than the opposite. Maybe after all the division and conflict this country has seen, the key to finding something in common is as simple as opening wide. Cal Perry for Inside the Middle East, Beirut. That winds up our look inside the Middle East. Any questions or comments, email us at mideast.cnn.com and we want to hear your suggestions of story ideas you'd like to see us cover. Email us and write in the subject line your very own story idea. I'm Brent Sadler in Dubai. See you next time.